Hello and welcome to another Ma review. Today, I'll be reviewing the 112 scale Toa Heavy Industries Synthetic Human by 1000 Toys. Just to be clear, this is a 112 scale version of an already existing 16 scale figure by the same company. But good luck getting that one, you jabroni. So who and what is Toa Heavy Industries? I don't know, who cares? Let's talk toys. The sleek blackness in the slipcover is fairly subdued. The minimalism really helps to accentuate the simplicity of the figure. You can see it sitting down in the front with a super sexy 1000 Toys logo at the bottom. Then there's another shot of the figure standing up at the back and some tasteful text at the sides. Slip the cover out and we see the figure in all its glorious synthetic 112ness. We get nothing at the top, Japanese text at the sides, bunch of stuff at the bottom and more stuff at the back, including the credits. Oh man, that font. Once opened, we get a little paper that gives us the simplest of instructions. Hand switching, face offing, and eye posing. When I got the figure, I was wondering where the eye poser was, but 1000 Toys was just being sneaky and hit it at the bottom of the clamshell. Oh, you sneaky snakes. Here's everything. The figure, an extra face, and two sets of extra hands. Boy, is this extra face creepy. It's meant to be the skull underneath the white face, but I bet you've already guessed that with the seamless color matching. These white eyes really pop out, giving us an incredibly creepy, unblinking glare. You can pose both of the eyes in both faceplates, but I'm not too fond of it, mainly because of the eye poses that we were given. If only the eyes had peg holes, and the tool had the corresponding peg, but instead, 1000 Toys made both parts into pegs. All this peg posing wrestling is so frustrating. Oh well, thank god I don't do eye posing. Take it as a warning for those of you that do though. We don't get very many hands, just the essentials. Relaxed hands, punching hands, and grasping hands. They're sculpted fantastically and have an amazing amount of detail. They all switch out easily despite having such small, nubby pegs. I'm especially fond of the grasping hands as versatility. He can grab anything with ease, whether it's a handgun, rifle, sword, or whatever the heck else there is to hold. It's just one of the many perks of having such high quality plastic. Speaking of high quality plastic, look at this, this work of art. From the sleek iRobot-ass design and the weather detailing in the paint, this synthetic human has certainly earned his name. The glossy white plastic paired up with the minty green and gray inner workings work perfectly in tandem to deliver us a robot that can be both non-threatening or spooky scary. This version of the synthetic human is marked as the second production run, meaning we get a neat looking two symbol at the back of the neck. It's nice for them to commemorate a reissue like this, but it is unfortunate that something like this could be seen as being second place to some. When I was pre-ordering this guy, I saw both versions were up, but instead I went with the second run because who knows, maybe they're just a slightly bit newer. All right, enough OCD, let's take a look at the ART. I see you L A T I O. <laughs> The head is on a ball joint with an exceptional range of movement. Same goes for the neck. The shoulders are on a long barbell joint, giving us more range than if it were just a regular butterfly joint. He has a bicep swivel, double hinged elbows, and a ball and hinge combo for the wrists. The torso has ball joints above the waist and above the abdomen, but you can only turn the chest in a full 360. There's also a loose piece between the joints that you left to finagle with to keep everything looking good. The legs are on a ball joint that let us kick straight out, far back, and go Van Dam. The legs are prone to dislocating though, but you can easily pop them back in if this ever happens. There's a bicep swivel at the top, and some very sexy double hinged knees. They go very far back, and are very much straight when they aren't. <laughs> what do I mean when I say that? Look at those delicious panels. Finally, the ankles are on a swivel joint at the top, with the feet able to go this high up, and this far low. Ankle pivot, and a toe hinge. All these joints are smooth and sturdy. It's very satisfying to pose them, just on the feel alone. but. Best of all, the major limbs are removable, and the joint and pegs are all flush. That means we can play around with a busted robot without worrying about breaking any of those pegs. So is this worth the $60 price tag? Well, with the amount of engineering put into it, and the versatile robot design, I say yes. It also helps to frame the figure's price tag as an artist's tool, because art is expensive. And so is this figure until we get another production run. All jokes aside, I consider this figure to be, literally, my favorite figure as of right now. I've managed to get so many poses out of this guy. He can be a killer, he can be innocent, he can be your angle, he can be your double. I hope that there will be another production run in the near future for those of you that missed out. But what about the current aftermarket prices? Would I still recommend getting one with such high prices? The answer is no. 
No, I would not. Expert craftsmanship and a lack of accessories can only get one so far. This has been Mari, and this has been a Mar Review. <laughs>